Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets of Quants. Welcome to another edition of the MBA Adventure, Making It Happen with Fortuna Admissions. We have with us today Judith Hodera, who is a co-founder of Fortuna and a former Wharton School admissions official, who's going to talk about the four things you need to know to perfect the perfect resume. So what's number one, Judith? So just about everybody that's applying to business school already has a resume from the last job they applied to. And the trick is to take that resume and really look at it with an eye towards this is business school. This is no longer a list of things that you've done or accomplishments you've had. But this is an opportunity for someone that doesn't know you to really begin to understand who you are and what makes you tick. Right. And I think the, the most important thing to start with is, is looking at that resume and thinking, is somebody that's reading this really going to want to sit down and talk to me? And then to go from there. That's a big lesson because I think that defies our, our natural instincts just to list what we've done. Of course. And business schools are thinking about not what you have done specifically in terms of tasks, you know, this was my, these were my responsibilities, but rather what was your impact on those responsibilities? Mm. Did you lead a group? Did you come up with something new? Was there a bottom line that you were engaged with? And so thinking not only about these are the things that fell within the scope of my job description, right. but these are the ways that I left my organization, I left my workplace, I left my group better than I found it. And to me, those are a lot of the things that should be going on in the applicant's mind as they're going through the resume process. Okay, number two tip. Number two tip, without a doubt, is to be able to show um, exactly your progression within your own career trajectory. So maybe you're applying to business school after three or four years in the workforce, maybe a little bit more than that. And being able to clearly delineate you started out with a certain kind of impact on the group or organization and how that's continued to grow. So you always want to make sure that you're quantifying your results, you're showing what you were leading, who you were leading, um, and how that has impacted your overall career path to mm -hmm. where you're ready to apply to business school. You really want that top line to show that you are now ready for the next part of your application adventure, as you put it. What else? A lot of students will not use the activities line at the bottom of their application very well. They'll be very matter-of-fact, enjoy cooking, hiking, and tennis. That doesn't tell us all that much, no. you know, and if you're reading about 10,000 applications a year, you really want to get to know that individual. More often than not, when I was interviewing at Wharton, my, that last line was what I started with. Ah. So I would much rather ask, well, tell me about that certain kind of cooking that you like to do. Where's your favorite mountain in California to hike? Right. Um, giving a little bit more color around those activities and hobbies can be very important. And by all means, for those of the students that have had computer backgrounds or mm -hmm. programming abilities, that kind of information is not necessary. Uh, it's really much more about you as an individual and the ways that you know, when you're not at work or you're not at school, what are the things you like to do and participate in? The personal you. The personal you, without a doubt. And then the final tip. I think that students don't always look at the resume as a great additional source of information for the reader. Right. And they, they really don't recognize that it's in concert with everything else that you've said about yourself. So that there's other places on the application to be very factual, and the resume is actually a place to make sure you're pretty descriptive. Because with essay counts being as they are, very low, the resume, and we'll talk a little bit more later about the online application, those are wonderful ways to get a lot of additional color commentary into your file. Kind of sneaky, but a great way to go about it. And you have to make sure you don't come off as an egomaniac in describing your achievements, right? That is without a doubt. And that's a very fine line. So you want to talk a lot about collaboration and teamwork, mentorship. And sometimes students will say, well, I've never really mentored anybody. And they say, well, think again. You know, mm -hmm. Is there anybody you've ever, ever had a conversation with about their career path? Or maybe there was someone that you were supporting while you were an undergrad mm -hmm. and, and tutoring them or, or telling them about your experiences. So right. sometimes it's not so clear, clearly defined or so black and white, but those opportunities are really out there. Okay, how long can my resume be? Oh, John, one page. No. I'm so sorry. Come one on. page. I can one... write a novel. I know. <laughs> well, we generally say, and if you've been in the workforce for more than a decade, you're allowed to have a second page. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, most of the applicants we see, and when I was at Wharton, one page. Uh, you can play around a little bit with the margins. Shouldn't make your font too small. 
Um, but you really 12 point, <laughs> 10 point, 8 point. And depends if you go with Times New Roman or you know what yeah. font you're using. And please, no color. That's really important. Uh, I had an applicant a couple of years ago. He changed the color of the sidebar on his resume depending on where he was applying. So he was very artistic, but I said, I know Kellogg's going to appreciate Kellogg Purple, uh, but you probably just want to go back to black and white. <laughs> Please. All right, Judith, thank you. Thank you. So now you know how to craft the perfect resume. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants, the MBA adventure, making it happen with Fortuna Admissions. Join us for our other episodes.